Have you ever thought about the base size of your models? How does it affect them? Sometimes it could be a boon to have a big base. Other times you can be tragically stuck on a piece of terrain. What about your opponent? Do they have an army of 25mm bases? How does this help them? Or does this hinder them? Let's first look at how it affects objective capture, since, after all, this game is all about completing objectives. In most circumstances, for objective capturing purposes, what we want is a small base. This will allow us to get more models into the capture zone whilst taking up a smaller footprint. This is particularly useful when we are contesting an objective that your opponent is already stood on. For example, if we look at the following image, you can see that these Noblars are able to steal the objective out from under the Iron Jaws player because their base size reduced the amount of models they could fit on, whereas the Noblar base size let them just squeeze a few more models in and take that key point. Circumstances where you might want to have a larger base would be if you are playing an army like Ogres or the new Sons of Behemoth, who count as more than one model whilst on an objective, where if you can get their full base when they're a monster-sized model onto the objective, you really reduce the chance of your opponent being able to get enough bodies onto the point and therefore take it off you. Whilst they do not count as more than one model, we would also give a quick shout out here to the big combat monsters, such as the Flesh Eater Courts Terrorgeist or Slaves to Darkness Archaeon. These will often be able to hold a point by using their base size combined with the fact that if you want to contest it, you have to actually get into melee range with them, often with fatal consequences. A final note on objective capture with base size is that if you exploit the coherency rules, a unit with a large base can often take up a wider footprint. In some cases, like the one on screen now, you can often take two objectives at once because the rules allow separate models within a single unit to contribute to the capture of different objectives at the same time. Though this comes with a caveat in that it makes you especially vulnerable if your opponent wishes to contest just one of these objectives individually, as not only will you have fewer models, but they will also be able to get an awkward charge on you, which the models further off to the side would then have to gradually pile in, you know, incredibly slowly. Next, let's move on to looking at how our base size might affect our movement. Will this help us? Will it hinder us? Well, it depends on a few factors, so let's have a look at the examples and find out. Base size can affect movement vastly differently depending on the other characteristics of our army. For example, does our model have the ability to fly, such as an Iron Jaws, Megaboss or Maw Crusher? In the image on screen, we can see that the ability to fly is going to allow the Maw Crusher to jump over this wall and get to the other side comfortably without worrying about being blocked. As we now transition to a Magma Droth, who has the same movement speed and even a better base for being able to walk around obstacles as their finner. However, Without the fly keyword, we can note that he will either have to walk all the way around the wall or pay to go up and down it. This creates a massive delay in how long it will take him to traverse various obstacles that we see on the battlefield. Another way your base can affect your movement is in the actual act of rounding a simple corner, such as an obstacle. You often have to swing out wide, similar to how a lorry does in real life. To move your base around the obstacle, you are not allowed to cut physical corners, so if you're moving, say, the brutes that we're putting on screen now, you can then hug the wall at a fairly close distance, just the width of the base. However, the magma drop from before, he has to take a much wider turn around the corner, and this often makes charges more difficult or even prevents you getting within capture reach of the objectives when it would have been critical to take them. Now that we've had a quick look at movement, how does this affect the other points of movement within the game, such as piling and reach? Let's move on. For pile-ins and reach, the base size is the true curveball. 
Are you able to get multiple ranks into combat and thus exude some awesome damage upon your opponent with a line of 10 brutes all wielding 2 inch reach weapons? Or are you a unit of Vulkite Berserkers who have small 1 inch axes and a large base? and thus you are relegated to a small role within your army, in part due to your inability to put damage on targets consistently. Conversely, to an example using a unit full of multiple models, when we look at monsters, such as a Moor Crusher, base size is less of an issue, as when it makes a successful charge, all of its weapons will often be in range of the desired target, so this is only really affected when you want to reach over the head of the unit you charged. And finally for this section, it's always worth taking a note of the shape of your base in relation to the size of a unit. As you can see on the following image, can we get six Gorgrunters into combat? Well, the answer is mostly yes. How about if we increase the unit to a size of nine? Well, given their mobility, sometimes yes, particularly when the other enemy unit is also of a large size. But what about the max unit size, which is a whopping 12 Gorgrunters? Wow, that's wide. There's not a chance you're gonna get all 12 into combat and it's going to be incredibly unwieldy to use regardless of their ability to move and not only this you will open yourself up to some truly savage battle shock phases for buffs having a bigger base size is almost always better when we have an aura of say 12 inches wholly within for example with a fire slayer's rune father in hermdar lodge their aura could either be from a rune father on foot or a rune father on magma drop. This could result in a significant difference in coverage as shown in the image on screen. We can have a unit that is in range of the rune father on foot and now when we move over to a rune father on magma drop you can see how much further that unit could be stood away from this model just because of his bigger base size. This difference is only truly shown by knowing how large the footprint of our model is before bringing it to the battlefield, which is also, in my case, preferably before I first bring it to an actual match with other players. It's always good to know what you're working with before you play the game. As a final shout out on base size, I would like to reference my earlier video on screening and note that having a larger base size per model in the unit whilst distributing your damage makes for an excellent trait in a screen or when zoning your opponent out of an area, as you can create a much wider screen for every step your base size increases whilst staying in coherency. Bonus points for putting that cavalry sideways and using the lengthwise part of the base which would maximize this even more thanks everyone for watching as you can see this was a shorter topic than normal but for me no less important i truly believe that base size can make or break armies and should be more clearly displayed on war scrolls before we get excited about what their shiny weapon statistics are as always, if you think I've missed anything or would like me to cover specific topics you would think would make for a good discussion, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.